Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, today I'm going to look at a variant that I don't think we've studied before on the channel. This one is called XV Sudoku and the extra rule here is that if any two cells add to 10 in the grid, any two cells that are next to each other, they get an X placed between them. And if any two cells add to five, they have a V placed between them. So you can see some Vs and Xs in this symmetrical grid from the uh, UK Open Championship. Gonna have a go at solving this now and uh, just see how we get on. Now, it's very important with XV Sudoku that what I just said is that if any two cells next to each other add up to 10 or 5, you get one of these markings. Now that means that every other cell, every other pair of cells next to each other doesn't add up to 10 or 5. And that's really important, kind of negative constraint to be aware of here. So, all of that said, let's have a look at the puzzle. It's often helpful to start with the constraints. So, this V here is in a column with a 2 in it. So, the numbers in it have to be 1 and 4, because the only other way of making 5 is with 2 and 3, and that's not possible. Now this V over here is slightly different. We don't have a number in the same column, but we do have 1 and 2 in the box. So that has either to be 3 or 4, going with a 1 or a 2 above it. Um, down here it's not very constrained, the V, so that's not quite as helpful. Um, now looking at some of these X's, this one here is in a box, both of its parts are in a box with a 6 and a 4, so it's not 6, 4, and with a 9, so it's not 9, 1. So it could be 8, 2, or 3, 7. Um, and that would make this one 2, 7, or 8. It can't be 2 on top and 8 below because of this 2. Um, so that's some information. Now, look at this 1, 4 that we put here. That means that this cell can't contain a 7, which is important because we've got 7 in columns 1 and 2 already. So the 7 in column 3 must be there. That rules out the 7 from those possible cells. And I've done something wrong here. Um, yes, this one can't be an 8. It could be a 3 instead. So either 2, 3 or 7, 8 there. Now interestingly a 5 in this form of Sudoku can never be in a cell which has an X or V touching it because you can never make up 10 from two fives because they'd be in the same row or column and it's obviously too much to make up a 5 with another number. So 5 has to be in one of those two cells in the central box. 6 now, over in this box, where can a 6 be? Well, it can't be in row 4 because of this 6, or row 5, and it can't be in this cell, so it has to be in the yellow cell there. 6 is one of these three. We don't know which one. Um, 2. 2 could be either here or here. Um, now, whichever one it w is, we'll have some information. If it was here, we'd know this was a 3. If it was here, we'd know this was a 3. Um, not quite sure if that helps us as knowledge in its own right at the moment. So we're going to need to find something else to help us here. Maybe these X's in the middle. Or maybe these X's along here. They must be any 2 of 1, 9, 2, 8 and 4, 6. There are some constraints over which are possible. If it was 4, 6, it would either have to be 6 here, 4 here, or 6 here, 4 here. 1, 9 is a bit less constrained, but if it was 8, 2, the 2 would have to be in the centre and the 8 outside. I don't know, that's not giving me anything immediately. Um, 6, 9, 4, 2. If that wasn't a 2, that would be 3, 7. This would be 5, 2. They'd be 1 and 8. And they'd have to be... Ah, oh, OK. Right. So, that does work. If this cell was not the 2, this central cell that's yellow, if it wasn't 2, that would mean that 2 would have to be down in one of these bottom cells. They'd be 5, 2. These would be 3, 7. You'd have 1 and 8 in these two cells at the top here with the X's in. And therefore, one of these above would have to be a 2, which it can't be because of that 2. So 
this can't not be a 2, or in other words, it is a 2. So we've got some progress there, um, but these can now be any of 1, 3, or 7. However, they cannot be 7, because that would put a 3 above them. So the 7 has to be down in the bottom row of that box. These are 1 and 3 in some order, and therefore above them are 7 and 9, making up the 10s from those two Xs. Um, 2A136, so 7 down there. 7 is either here or here in this box. Um, what else do we know? Not much. So those are either 7 or 9 there. What's that going to tell us further up? Uh, well, this V down here, now that we've got the 2 here, this can only be 1 and 4, and we've got the 1 there to show which way round that is. So that goes in that order, 8, 2, 9, 1, 4. Um, none of these three cells can be a 7, because there's clearly going to be a 7 in that box already. So this is the 7. These are 3, 6, and 5. The 3 must go at the top, because of the other 3s in rows 2 and 3. And now, this has got to either be 4 in one of those two, because of this 4. Um, we can't rule that out from what we know here. Now, we've almost used all the... Um, information from the X's and V's, but we've still got these two in this second row to go. We haven't established anything about it except that the insides have to be 1, 2, 4, or 8. So the outsides could be, what does that give us, 9, 8, 6, or 4. Can't be a 4 in that one, can't be a 6 in that one. That's not all that helpful yet. Um, ah, look, twos. Sorry, you've probably noticed this earlier. There's two in row four there and a two in row five. The two in row six is constrained by these two. We mentioned earlier that they were quite severe on the twos. That gives us a two there and a three to complete the V marking there. Um, six, nine, five, seven, two. Hmm, now, what's that giving us now? 7 is either here or here from the two 7s that we've already got in those rows. 3 is either here or here. Ah, yes, now, remember that negative constraint we talked about. Um, all of these and Xs are marked, so this cell cannot, in fact, be a 3, because then we'd have a V between these two, because they add up to 5. So I've been forgetting the negative constraint, even though I told you earlier how important it was. It also rules out 7 from here, because now we'd have a 10 there. So once you get that in your head, that the negative constraint matters, and I should have had that in my head for some time, um, it makes a big difference. This cell can't be a 1 because it's next to a 4 with, an, with no V. So 1 must be one of those two. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have spotted that earlier. Sorry. That's quite poor. Attempt to educate you in the ways of XV Sudokus if I don't remember that when, uh, when it's such an important... Um, feature of these puzzles. So again, 7 here is not possible. That's the 7. 7 up here must be in one of these two cells. We don't know which one. Um, 3, 7, 1, 2 here. So where can a 4 go? Yeah, there's various possibilities. They're not ruled out, even by the negative constraint. Um, ah, but where can a 4 go here? Well, that 4 rules it out from the middle two, and the Constraint, again, means it can't be up here because if it was there, it would be next to a 6 and there'd be a 10. Now, down here, it can't be in this cell because that would push the 1 to here and that would be a 1-4 pair, making 5. So 4 must be here. That can't be a 1 for the same reason. 1 goes in there. Um, we've got 5, 8, 9 to place in here. 8 can't be next to a 2, so it's not there or there. Now, 5 and 9, they could be either way around as far as I can tell at the moment. But now down in row 6, we've got 8, 4, 2, 
957 must finish with 613. That makes this a 4. Um, Oh, look, and this 1-3, this was available from very early on. That cannot be a 1 because it's above a 4 and there's no B symbol. So we could have worked out which way around the 9-1 and the 7-3 pairs were a long time ago. And well done if you did that. Um, and congratulations for generally understanding the principles of this puzzle better than I, I was remembering them as I went, despite making it clear at the start that's what we needed to look at. So four must be there. Four, seven, two, one, three, nine can't be in the bottom row because it would be next to a one without an X. So nine must be one of those. Um, six can't be there or there because of the fours next to them. So six here is over on the side and that means six in the top one is one of those two. One must be on the left side. Can't be in that cell because that would put a nine here in the same box as another nine. So in fact, that's a one seven pair, which is quite useful. Two, three there. Eight isn't in this column because of the eight and it's not next to the two. So eight is either here or here. How about nine? Nine can't be here or in the bottom row, but it could be elsewhere. Um, what else should we be noticing then? Three is one, of, ah yes, three. This three in column two and this one in column one, put three in one of these two, and it can't be here because that's next to a seven. So three goes there, that puts a three here. I think we've got all the threes in the grid now. Nine needs to go in row eight somewhere and it can't go next to the one because there'd be an X there. Nine goes there, five, eight to go with the seven, one, four, three there. That puts two there. We've got six and nine to place. This bottom one can't be a six because it's next to a four. And that's why this is such a neat variant, really. It's uh, really makes use of the, the negative constraint. Now two across the bottom, can't be here, it's in the same box as another two. Can't be here because it's next to a three. On both sides, actually. So that's two. That gives us a two up there. See if you can work out why. If you're not sure, two there. That gives us an eight next to the X. Um, that eight finishes off eight down here. Nine and five. And it's really coming together nicely. This one can't be an eight because it's next to a two. And um, I feel like we're getting pretty close to a finish. Two, six, one, three, seven. So that five down at the bottom has sorted out that five, nine pair. Still not sure, oh yes, seven and five pair is sorted out there, that's good. This is four and eight, and the eight over here makes clear which. The last X has been used now. And now we're just finishing off. Um, and I mean, I, I like this puzzle style. I think it's really entertaining, even, even in, if it wasn't one of the types that I was particularly quick at. I think I'd always have a go at this in a championship because I just like the logic that's involved. It's, it's quite pretty. Obviously, you'll have worked out that the reason it's using X's and V's is because of the Roman numerals 5 and 10 but they turn out to be a really good pair to use for this type of Sudoku. And there we go, that's how to do an XV Sudoku. Um, I hope that's interesting. If you like that, do let us know and we'll publish a few more XV puzzles. The most extreme form of this variant comes with, it's called an XV Sudoku and there are no markings in the grid, which implies that there are no pairs of squares in the grid that add up to five or 10 next to each other. Um, and that you do see occasionally. That's quite an interesting one sometimes. Um, you still don't need very many givens to uh, work that one out. But entertaining puzzle. Nice, nice one from the UK Open. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again on the Crack the Cryptic. Do remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, or sponsor us on Patreon. There's a new puzzle been posted on there for our uh, patrons so um, they're very welcome to that and uh, a video as to how to solve it as well um, a little bit of extra content 
for those who like the sandwich Sudoku particularly. Thanks very much, and uh, see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.